bite-sized stories. So I am interviewing the Boylan sisters today, and they are producing and directing a new movie that's called The Greatest Inheritance. It's really a really, really cool movie. Everybody should watch, but I want to, we're here talking to them a little bit about them first. I want to hear a little about who they are, just introduce themselves to the audience, and then we'll talk about this beautiful project. So you want to start, Alexandra? Sure. Hi, thank you so much for having us, Patricia. We're happy to be here. Um, yeah, my name is Alexandra Boylan, and Andrea and I grew up in Massachusetts. Our father was a minister, is a minister, 41 years at a church. And um, yeah, for me, I, I got the bug and really loved acting at a young age. And I moved out to Los Angeles, California at 19 and started pursuing the industry. And I really felt that God had actually called me into acting. And then, you know, fast forward 10 years later, I actually moved out to Albuquerque, New Mexico and kind of re-surrendered my life to the Lord after acting didn't go very well for me. <laughs> it's a tough business. It's yeah. very competitive. And I, um, I sort of re-surrendered my life to him and said, all right, God, what do you want for my life? And then after making a couple independent films, we got called into making um, female-driven faith-based films and when Andrea and I took that call, it has been the most incredible thing to see how God, when you're in the will of God, he moves fast. And I know because That's I so spent true. 10 years not in the will of God and I felt like I was at a standstill and nothing was happening. So it's been incredible to see that this is what he wants for our life and my life. And I'm so grateful that in just 10 years, we've made uh, six uh, female-driven faith-based films. Right. Yes, and I, I was uh, reading about you, and um, I'll let Andrea introduce herself in just a little bit, but I was, uh, you know, I, I have seen Catching Faith. I didn't know that I was going to be interviewing, you know, the, the the directors of Catching Faith, and so you had done Catching Faith, which uh, had like a two-year run on Netflix. Very, very good movie. Um, it was it was sold on like Walmart and streaming now on Hulu and Amazon Prime, so you guys can still watch that. And then we had Catching Faith Two, who was which was released in 2019. Um, and then there was a movie called Wish for Christmas, which I think I have watched that little movie. I, I love the chick flicks, so you know I think <laughs> I, I watch everything out there. The chick flicks. It seems like it's a very few type of movies that are still clean these days you know yeah <laughs> but yeah wish for christmas was sold to pure flex entertainment which mm -hmm. uh, the christian community well know knows very well and uh, the universal studios home entertainment as well so then uh, we know i also have seen switched uh, and uh, that was uh, yes that was awarded uh, the winner of the did, did I say, is it Kiaros? Kairos. Kairos. Kairos Pro Movie Guide Award for Best Screenplay. So just a really outstanding career already since you have started doing that. So very exciting. And then you are also the author of Create Your Own Career in Hollywood, advice from a struggling actress who became a successful producer, which is available, available in Kindle and Amazon. Very wonderful. And this is what I love the most. You are an active member of Woman in Fin in Los Angeles. And I love that because the Hollywood industry needs refreshing Christian presence. And I'm telling you, one of the things that I have enjoyed the most about starting this podcast and is the people I've been I've been meeting and interviewing who are making a huge change difference in the world and who are believers mm -hmm. so yeah i think that we don't know but we do have a strong presence um even in hollywood and mm -hmm. so that's amazing i do want to ask you a little bit a, a little bit more about that but i want andrea to introduce herself first please thank you patricia it's so nice to be with you and to be able to share our story um well i joined this um, project of making female driven faith based movies a little bit later in life I'm actually a licensed clinical social worker and had mm -hmm. professionally spent my life as a social worker and a stay at home mom for part of that period of time me too and, <laughs> all right and so um 
about 10 years ago when Alexandra was called into this, she gave me a call and I had never been part of, I had never been behind the scenes in a movie. I love watching movies, but never <laughs> did not know how to make one and had never written a screenplay. I had, however, written some, some books and some Bible study material and things like that. And um, so I had a little bit of experience with writing. And the two of us began to write together and it's history. You just read off our list of projects and it's it's pretty amazing. Um, I got to be a part of being on set for making most of those movies and it's been an amazing journey. That's so great. You know, I'm a writer. Yeah, so I write, a, I, I, of course I have a column for the Atlanta Journal Constitution but I'm, I'm a nonfiction writer. And I really am thinking about getting into screenwriting too. I have some good ideas for movies. Maybe you, maybe we need to talk. <laughs> yes. yes. Our favorite book is Save the Cat by Blake Snyder. It's the best screenwriting book you'll ever, it's the last book, screenwriting book you ever have to read. I swear we, we used that and we stick to his formula and it really works and it's a great so save the cat if you're looking to get into screen save writing. the cat that is awesome yes i'm just like getting god is just putting me uh in front of all these people uh, you know the the kendrick brothers i mean you guys there's I, just, I i i have interviewed just in the past two months i think four or five directors and producers and and I'm like, Lord, are you saying something to me? And like, <laughs> well, this is so great. So now today the topic is The Greatest Inheritance, your newest production and a really great uh, cast, by the way. Um, talk, tell me, tell the, the audience a little bit about the, the cast, how you got to choose them and how this all came together. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, well, The Greatest Inheritance is about an estranged family that all returns home to bury their mother, but really to get their inheritance. And when they get home, they find out that their uh, deceased mother has left the deed to the property somewhere on this estate and left them clues and challenges that they have to do together as a family in order to find it and teaching them that really the only thing we inherit on earth is the kingdom of heaven and that family is more important than money. And um, it is this movie is such a testament to God's timing. Uh, we wrote this film after we shot Wish for Christmas, actually, and we thought it was going to be our next movie. And it kept not getting, we couldn't get funded, we couldn't get it made, and we ended up making Catching Faith 2. And then we were still trying to make Inheritance. And then we made Switch. And, and this movie kept getting pushed. And we were like, what's going on with this movie? What is going on? Are we not supposed to make it? And then What's so crazy is we, we finally got the funding and we all went to Columbus, Georgia in February of 2020. Mm -hmm. And we were ready to shoot the movie. We were going out there to location scout and we were supposed to shoot in April of 2020 wow. and the world shut down. <laughs> I was we going to say, like, that okay. doesn't happen. <laughs> I know. And we were like, okay, what? Does God not want us to make this movie? What is going on? We have been working on this film for like seven years. And um, finally, in July of 2020, we did all step out in faith. We went to Columbus, Georgia. We shot this movie. And we realized that out of all of our films, it was the only movie that we could have made during the pandemic. Because the whole film takes place on one location and only has a few actors. Mm -hmm. And then fast forward to when the movie comes out at a time when so many people have lost so much. It yes. is incredible that God wanted, it's like for such a time as this, mm -hmm. God wanted the message of the, you know, we can lose everything in this world, but we will never lose Jesus Christ. Yeah, and absolutely. so it's such an incredible story to see how God's timing is so perfect. And that's how the movie took seven years to get made, got shut yes. down to the pandemic. And then we made it and we got Mina Tuvari and Jaleel White and yes. an incredible cast all come really out and make this amazing. movie. And you are right. That story made me think about something. Um, you, there's this sentence that you only really know people when money is involved, right? <laughs> Have you heard that? It's like some people, they show a side that they've never shown before when money is in play. And we see that, right, in this, in this movie. Oh, I think I'm losing my microphone here. Uh, we see that in this movie. Uh, and uh, the, the, it, like like I said at this core 
at the core, this, this movie is about faith and family. And these are such important things, especially when it comes to inheritance and money and different things like that, that I know that some families struggle with. Um, mm -hmm. So why were these themes so important during the story writing process, Andrea? Uh, well, Alexandra and I are two of four kids. So we have, I, I'm the oldest, she's the youngest. We have two brothers in between. And um, I think that when we were writing, a lot of the stories are stories that are from our childhood mm -hmm. um, and or some of the stories that have come from me raising kids. <laughs> and I think that when we were, we were trying to talk about a, a fun way of really um, to look at the preciousness of life, you know, and you, we take for granted so much. I think that, that the next day you're going to be able to pick up the phone and call your loved ones. And we really never know, right? You never know when the last time is going to be that you get to talk to someone. And so th this was just a really fun, creative way to be able to make it sort of an adventure and a fun game, but at the same time, talk about really deep things. Like how long are you going to hold a grudge with someone? Exactly. <laughs> and I think so with important. family, that's a big deal. Like we do, we hold grudges. And, and also I think something that it's really important that this movie kind of illustrates for us is that we each have our own perception of what happened in our childhoods and in our growing up and each of our story is our story and it's important and it should be embraced but also we can kind of go to the grave with, with some, those grudges or those maybe false perceptions of what mm -hmm. happened and and it's not worth it <laughs> in the large scheme of life it's just not worth it so what's the conversation you need to have with your loved one and then how can you move on so that you can do and enjoy each other and and that's really what the story illustrates in in just a fun wacky way yes. <laughs> we also kind of imagine that our mom might do what this mom did <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> we get us to all interact yes. in a fun way with each other as adults <laughs> that's so fun so you kind of got a little bit of what you like your your mom's uh, sense of humor i guess <laughs> dealing with with the children that's great. It would, you know, it would be a test for sure you know, to do something like that, I think, for every family. And so forgiveness, you said something, Andrew, that's so true. Um, anybody who knows many families, we know that forgiveness is a lot of times a huge issue that separate family 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 members. And it this in this movie, forgiveness plays a huge role in the relationship. Mm. So what parts of the movie, uh, Alexandra, do you feel specifically point to the message of God's grace and forgiveness? Well, of course, um, all of the clues and challenges are from Ecclesiastes. Mm -hmm. um, which was our way of incorporating the message in a fun way that everyone could hear it. And, um, and all of those are kind of tied together into telling the story of what the kids are going through. And each of them have something that they need to learn in the message about, like you said, forgiveness and faith. And, um, and, and, and like we said, we're always trying to find a really organic way to tell scripture to tell the message of Jesus. And this was such a cool way to do that. And it's kind of like, you know, the kids are annoyed at the parent of the mom. So that's the way we can get it to get heard through that way. So, and I, I just love how we, we use the Ecclesiastic for, um, it, there is a time and a season for everything. Mm -hmm. And we actually gave out wrap gifts with that written on it. And we kept saying that even on set every day, wow, there is a time, there is a time for this movie, this message mm -hmm. right now. And um, I think that that theme is so important for people that, you know, God's timing is truly the best. And we just have to sometimes sit in the not so great times and then mm -hmm. rejoice in the great times. And, um, and so I feel like that part of the film is so important, you know, and agree. You can pick up Andrea if you have, might have a better answer. <laughs> I think that was beautiful. That was a beautiful answer. I do love, I, I'm glad that you brought up the, there's a time for everything in the Ecclesiastes scripture, because uh, when we speak of the movie coming out, I think all of us are in a process of, of grief. 
about what we lost, what we thought our world looked like and how it all changed for everyone. And we have this collective grief process we're in as a, as a country and as a world really. Yes, and absolutely. there is nothing better than going back to the Ecclesiastes three and seeing that from history, you know, that's Solomon thousands of years ago, yes. he was like, there's a time to be born and there's a time to die. There's a time to fight and there's a time to lay down your weapons. There's a time for, you know, joy yes. and a time for tears. And sometimes we just need permission to say, yeah, there's a time for all of this. And we need to give ourselves space to feel what's happening in our lives. Absolutely. And, you know, during mm -hmm. the, as a matter of fact, I, just this morning, I talked to a, fan, a friend uh, who we used to go to church together during the pandemic. We we both left our church and we are in different churches and we were talking out we were at this church i was we were there for 20 years and we were talking about what we are like the hardship of moving you know for losing our church during the pandemic is when mm -hmm. everything happened and that it, it is a grieving process you know because yeah. we you know your church family is your family i'm like you know like i'm from from overseas i mean i my husband's family is a hundred miles away so i don't have any family here my church family and my friends are my family so i i believe that this grieving uh is like you said is a worldwide thing but it's not just lo having lost people to whether covid or other things that have happened that have happened in the past couple of years but it, it's also we're grieving as a nation as a world in different ways because our life has changed completely yes so, and yeah. you know, and of course, just like the family in this movie, uh, people react to grieving in different ways. You know, grieving mm. can bring the best out of us or it can bring the worst out of us. And we see that beautifully portrayed in this movie. You know, you see mm. the grieving you. process, you know, different, the, the different uh, characters in the story, mm -hmm. right? They they grieve different way. One, one, one sister is just having the hardest time even having to go through this because she loved her mom so much and she's close, so, so close to her mom. The other sister is just, no, no, let's, let's get going. Let's, uh, I want the money and get out of here and keep on living my life. And you know what is a, it, it is a kind of a portrait of how I believe that people have responded differently mm. with the changes in the world too you know yeah uh so you have some people it's that true. got super fit during you no know, and some people like me <laughs> that put on 30 pounds you know it's like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. totally it's true you're right yeah everyone responds and, everything differently yeah and it's the element of hu human the, the human element in any circumstance mm -hmm. and i think that of course you um it's uh, it's kind of exaggerated, you know, because it's a romantic comedy, but it's <laughs> very real, like mm. how you know the, the different ways of responding, even within a fan, like a group of sisters and brothers, right? Uh, what mm. did you guys did you get this inspiration in any particular event or circumstances for this movie? Mm inspired like from our true life you mean yeah like or somebody else's life maybe that you <laughs> <laughs> well like andrea said a lot of these stories actually came from our real life like andrea um the the the, the easter basket that's under the table scene that they talk about at the kitchen table that actually happened to andrea and her kids <laughs> and then when i was a kid my brother really did handcuff me to my bed and told my parents that i wouldn't come down for dinner that <laughs> was getting me into trouble and so we do pull from real life experiences and i think what was really awesome because like how andrea and i've tried to create stories is weaving in a really really powerful message in a way that people can watch it that's fun so mm -hmm. that they will want to walk away and share it with other people but yet they're getting this really great message and then i lost my train of thought i was going to say something <laughs> 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 I hate when that happens when you're like oh i lost my train of thought oh but, yeah um 
Yeah. Well, I, I was did. I was going to add about the the apology and um and it, it's interesting. There's a lot. There's so much in the movie that I think we can relate to from our past or our present. Mm -hmm. And even this last week, um, I was sharing this with Alexandra that I had a situation that happened where I was thinking about the conversation that one of our characters has with her husband, and her husband's like, "Maybe you just need to say you're sorry," and she's like, "But I didn't really do anything wrong." So she's like, "She." didn't want to take responsibility for something she hadn't done and he said but but your sister was hurt by what you did and I think there's something really powerful in that for whether it's I think about my childhood or I think about my present life now you know that sometimes my pride keeps me from apologizing because I'm like but I didn't really do anything wrong right. but yet maybe my actions with unintended consequences were hurtful and that that the power of what an apology can do for someone when you actually take responsibility to say yep I did say that now I yes. didn't mean it the way that you heard it but I did say that and I'm really sorry that it hurt your heart you know and Absolutely. there's so I think throughout the movie we really tried to incorporate you know things that you can take away that hopefully you can apply and here I mean we're writers and I was just talking about it going it was like running through my head yeah. <laughs> as I dealt with a real life situation this week going it you know even if I wasn't necessarily intentionally wrong I still think I need to say I'm sorry that this Absolutely. was Absolutely, I I remember Remember something uh, I have uh, two girls and uh, one is nine, 19 almost 20 one is turning 16 this year so my baby's not a baby anymore and uh, this you know this this week this Saturday she turned 16 and um, I have all uh, throughout our relationship you know as they started growing up and uh, sometimes I hurt them unintentionally this yeah. sentence was said to me many years ago, and I always kept this in mind, and it, ha it has to do with what you just said, Andrea, is perception is reality. So mm -hmm. to me, you know, I may perceive as like I didn't hurt someone, but it is for to them, I did. So it's their reality. And if you just, it's mm -hmm. the whole thing about uh, empathy, right? It's being able yeah. to put yourself in people's shoes and realize that some people are more sensitive to something that you wouldn't care less about. Like if somebody <laughs> said this to me, you know, like I'm not an overly sensitive person. So I have to be like extra careful because I'm not very sensitive. Like if it, it takes a lot to hurt me, but not everybody's like that, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and I think that this, uh, this uh, movie also brings a little bit about the fact of, you know, within even a, a family, several siblings you have people who react to the same mother <laughs> no yeah. the same the same um corrections the same disciplines the same way of teaching the kids different ways and you see mm -hmm. in, and you see this in the movie right because uh i mean the mother was the same and yeah different responses mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. tell me uh alexandra who do you think that will like this movie oh i'm sorry repeat that uh, who who do you think that will like this movie <laughs> well we hope everyone everybody likes this movie. <laughs> but i know that everything isn't for everyone but you know it's interesting because we, you know, we always think our demographic for this would be like 35 to 55 year old women, but then, Am you know, Andrea was at a screening in Wisconsin where she lives and a 12 year old boy came up to her and said, this is like one of my favorite movies. Oh. So we love getting to go to some of the screenings to see who does it resonate with. And I think the sister story, I, we at our premiere in Atlanta, Georgia, I had a young girl come up to me and said she loved it because she saw herself in the sister. She was like, my big sister drives me crazy. And so, you know, mm -hmm. it's really awesome to hear that young people are really loving it. But yes. I think, uh, you know, I think families would love this. Um, I think we hope that, you know, it could even heal some wounds. My When I lost my train of thought, I was thinking about when Andrea and I write a script, we always send it out for test screening, mm -hmm. uh, test readers, test readers. And we had so many people come back to us after reading the script going, oh, can I tell you my story of this happened in my family? Wow. And so many people have this experience of when someone dies, 
the fighting over the will. Yeah. And um, somebody else came to me after reading the script and said, you know what, when I put it down, I called my brother and I made up with my brother and I told wow. him I loved him. And I was just like, oh, and that was just some people read the script. So we were like, oh my gosh, God's going to do something huge with this story. And our prayer has always been that it would bring some healing to families who might've been broken for many different reason, reasons, whether they're holding grudges mm -hmm. and they're not reconciling things from their youth or because there was a fight over money. So I think that people hopefully, you know, will call their mothers first off or call yes. their sibling or somebody that they haven't reconciled with. And this would create healing. And that, that like what Andrea said recently at the premiere of like, you just never know when it's the last time you will yeah. talk to somebody. So not only tell them you love them, but tell them the wonderful things about them. Right. Andrea was uh, sharing about a funeral she went to where everybody gave these amazing messages about the person. And she was like, let's do that when someone's alive, alive. and not wait until they're gone. And that, so that spoke to me, Andrea. So <laughs> I just told your story because it's so yeah. beautiful. So it, it is so <laughs> true. You know, I, I have a, I have a, like a rule for myself, I guess, or a life motto who is like no regrets and when I say no I try to live so that if something happens to someone I lo love that I will have no regrets I you know I never I didn't withhold love from them and didn't withhold telling them how much they how precious they were to me and um, I just say I have always had this in the back of my mind to just try to keep the relationships um intact you know uh, yeah there are some people that you know you just can't get along very well <laughs> I mean and you get that there's always a person that you're going to clash with but you don't have to hold grudges you don't have to you know you th there's there's only so much time for forgiveness and really and truly mm -hmm. even with God right we only are given one chance for for forgiveness which is like a lot a, a, a lifetime to, you know there's just one life in other words, right. you know, yeah. and so we, you know, this is a, it's a beautiful, beautiful story about just remembering not to hold grudges and to forgive and to reconcile before somebody dies. I believe that too. Mm -hmm. So tell me what it, what was it like working with uh, Mena Suvari and Jaleel White? Those are great. Well, yeah. Mina Savari is the real deal. She is a fabulous actress and a really wonderful person. And, and Jaleel White has just got a great sense of humor. Um, <laughs> I got to, yeah, I got to work in the art department on this movie and he was always hiding his props. <laughs> really? And that's the one story that we like to tell is that we were always chasing around trying to find where he had hidden the book. <laughs> and he did have a great sense of humor. He also has a great spirit. This is a story that Alexandra knows but that there were some kids that really wanted to meet him mm -hmm. and when he found that out he said do not do not turn any kids away I will give autographs I will come out and meet them he's he's the real deal he's that's really good precious actor. that's mm -hmm. precious he's a great actor and yeah he is. he is really funny on this movie so perfect perfect <laughs> role for him for sure well so um let me ask you this why do you what would you say that the the greatest the greatest inheritance you know is the kingdom of heaven this is the is a sentence that i know uh, i have read before when it comes to this movie you know that the greatest inheritance is the kingdom of the, he the heaven but we have to be careful of the legacy that we live here not our financial legacy but our spiritual legacy to our friends and family and friends, you know, how would you say that this movie is going to speak in that regard that, you know, reminding people that the greatest inheritance is heaven, but that we are to take care of our legacy here on earth. Yeah, well, the movie talks a lot about using the gifts that God gave us. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like that's a big part of the film is that God has given us gifts and we must be bold and brave to go out there and use the gifts that God, we are here now. We can't just think about like what you said, like it's not just about 
the kingdom of heaven, we have to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth while we are alive here. Mm -hmm. And our life is so precious and we have a certain amount of time. And, you know, when God called Andrea and I to do this and he saw what he was doing with our lives, we were like, we have to run, we have to run and we can't run fast enough to keep up with God. But, you know, I was really thinking, I've been thinking about this the whole interview, Patricia, that if God has laid this upon your heart to be a screenwriter. I want to encourage you to do that because when God called Andrea and I into this, um, I was living in Los Angeles, California. We got the opportunity to make Catching Faith. We had a tiny budget. I really believe that God called me to do it. And I gave up my apartment. I put everything I owned in storage and I moved in with Andrea. And I lived on the road out of one suitcase for a full year to make Catching Faith a, a reality. And I can't believe what God has done with Catching Faith. You said it, in, you know, and it, we've gone to Cuba with that movie. It, it became the top five consistent selling movie for the distribution company. And I love to tell people now, like what is impossible for us is possible for God. So when he calls us, we have to go, we have to do it. And if he wants it, he will knock down all doors and we're just his vessel to do it. And he takes care of the rest. So Absolutely. I think that, that's what the movie is about, that if God's given you a gift, you have to go and use it because he is going to work through you to bring his kingdom um, to or his king, the kingdom of heaven to earth. All and right, then I so want to encourage you, Patricia, that if you're called to do it, you have to go and God well, then, will do the then rest. Then here's the deal. You need to give me your email. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Write your email right here on the chat and I will be in touch with you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, please do. <laughs> I will. May, may, maybe, maybe I'm in we'll, your way we'll... right now. There you go. Please do. Please do. Uh, <laughs> who knows, like... right? There are divine appointments right. everywhere. Absolutely. Never, never, never know. Um, this is so, so cool. Well, what I would love for Andrea to tell me now is where people can watch this movie. <laughs> It is available on Amazon, um, all your cable networks, <laughs> and um, I'm Alexandra is really good at this, so let's let her do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's available anywhere on video on demand, so Amazon, iTunes, Vudu, um, Redbox, you can get it on Redbox, uh, yeah, pretty much anywhere where you get video on demand, so you can rent it. Um, on Spectrum and uh, and Walmart.com, I believe. Oh no, because they wouldn't have streaming. So it's but yeah, and then we will release on Pure Flix streaming in I believe June or July. July so July be 15th, looking, I believe July fifteenth. We're looking forward on Pure Flix. That's great. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all this information on the show notes, both on YouTube and on the podcast as well. And uh, Thank you. so yeah, I'm definitely gonna gonna put all of that information that people can access and they can watch the movie i watched it and it's it's really a great family movie that's the beauty of these movies you know all of these people that i have been interviewing you don't have to close your kids eyes at that's any right. scene you know of the yes. movie you know it's a movie that it's a movie that is clean it's for the entire family it brings a heaven perspective to death a heavenly perspective to family relationships and, and it has, it contains like a the message of the gospel, you know, the, the mom, the mom is very clear that the, the, the greatest inheritance and the only true inheritance that we, we have at the end is the kingdom of heaven It's Jesus Christ. And I, mm -hmm. I want to say how blessed I am to, to talk to the two of you and, you know, to know that there are people out there who are investing their lives to bring entertainment that brings glory to the kingdom. So I, I'm very, very excited uh, and, and just happy to, to meet both of you and wish you guys just the best success. I am going to email Alexandra. Yes, <laughs> Good. There, Please you know, there, are, there are divine meetings every time. <laughs> right. There is. Yes. Well, and, uh, and I'm looking forward to to interviewing you again and you know and again and again for more that. and more more and we more we just wrapped one, a new movie so hopefully sooner than later oh really you did that's awesome yeah. so you have a have a new one coming up soon yeah yeah okay. it's called identity crisis and it's very similar to our movie switched it's about a shy science whiz in college who struggles with imposter syndrome and not feeling good enough and confident 
and she figures out how to clone herself and send her clone off to do all the things that she's afraid of, only to discover that God already created her the perfect version of herself. And he loves her and he gave her all the courage she needed. She just needed oh to Oh my try. gosh, I love that. I can't wait. Yes. Please include me in the launch. You know, I was gonna okay. go, I was invited to the premiere and I got sick and I couldn't be there, oh. but I was I was looking forward to invite to interviewing guys in person. But mm -hmm. next time I will be there, identity crisis. So when are we supposed to see it? this one? Is it gonna be released soon or? We're hoping the fall. Okay. If all goes well this fall. It's in post production. We're it's in the editing phase, but it's beautiful. It's directed by Sherry Rigby. Uh, we produced it with Ben Howard and Aaron Miller at Third Post Content, who did Blue Miracle. So it has and it has an incredible cast, and God is just keeps blessing us. So, like we said, we just keep making movies. That's amazing. <laughs> well, congratulations, ladies. This is Thank definitely you. a God-sized story. It's two sisters. One big idea are just little movie by movie promoting the kingdom in the world. Uh, kudos to you. And uh, just may God continue to bless you and open incredible doors more and more. Thank you, Thank <laughs> you so much. Thank you. Thank you all. Y'all have a blessed rest of your day. And it was Thank great you meeting too. you. Nice to meet you. Thank you too. Thank you, Thank you Patricia. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye.